not right now. You can see it, right? Uh, actually, no. Oh, I can see it now. Mm, now? Yeah, it, it's all right. Uh, is the presentation visible? Um, I, I don't know how you started the presentation. I can see only uh, Google present like uh, the presentation, but not the slideshow. Yeah, it's loading now. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Are we just let me know when we are good to start? Uh, what? Uh, are we good to start? Yeah, yeah, we, we're good to start. Okay. Good luck. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Hey everyone, uh, so today we are here to talk about Gina's thing called Dockeray. So Gina, as you all know, is a cloud native neural search framework that you can use for any kind of data. So a little bit about me, I am Shibam Sabu, a developer relations specialist at Gina AI. I love to talk about neural search, open source, and all things about large language models. I am also a co-author of an O'Reilly manual called GP3, building innovative NLP products using LLMs. Uh, for all these updates, and if you have anything that you want to talk about neural search, open source, language models, you can reach out to me via Twitter or LinkedIn. So a little bit about Gina's ecosystem. Right now, Gina's ecosystem uh, consists of four different products, uh, which is Docker. Docker is where you get in and where you process, manipulate your data. So this is something that uh, lets you deal with your data, that lets you play with your data, that lets you massage your data. Then Gina3, which we internally also refer as Gina Core, it's a neural search framework that lets you use the data that and lets you build. Uh, and then we have Gina Park, which is basically a marketplace for executors or a marketplace for predefined executors or logics that you can directly use within Gina to build your neural search solutions. And once you do all of these, you build the neural search solutions, you use a pre-trained model, then there is always a need to fine tune the model on your own data. So we created fine tuner that lets you fine tune any deep learning model. It doesn't need to be related to neural search. You can fine tune any deep learning models agnostic of framework using Gina's fine tuner. So moving on, talk about Docker. Docker is a data structure for unstructured data. It lets you uh, pre-process or it lets you deal with any kind of data, be it text, image, audio, video, or even 3D mesh. So let's understand what is Docker. So let's say even if you have an image, it lets you manipulate different images. It lets you crop images and it uh, lets you pre-process the image data. Then it also lets you manipulate the text data as well. And it lets you mix the data, split the data, combine the data, and do all, all things uh, with, with your data of all the time. So the two basic concepts that Docker relies on is document and document array. Document is the basic data type in Gina that comprises of any, uh, any of the data types that you can think of uh, a document can consist of a text, image, video, audio, or anything else. So, and then we also created this document visualizes, uh, visualizer or data visualizer, which lets you visualize your data. And you can uh, visualize the data in the form of embeddings and apply different techniques to it. It can be PCA, TSNE, or anything else. And it reprocess the... See the software. Going to... So, so what are we going to do in this workshop today? We are going to build a simple AI powered so, search engine for fashion images. Yes. You heard it right. We are going to build a fashion uh, image search engine. 30 minutes or so. And we will do this all in a cool. lab no notebook using Docker. Just using Docker. Some of the genus components. So the first question that comes to your mind is like, what is search? We, we have been talking about Gina. We have been talking about Docker and all the other products. But before even uh, getting uh, deeper into that, let's let's first understand. So search, as you see, search is everywhere. I mean, if you go on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Stack Overflow, Amazon, right? So search is everywhere. And everything you do has to deal with search. 
it can be of text search it can be images uh, it it also consists of audio video or even searching text within pdf or even chat what everything is basically boiled everything boils down to a basic search prop then you you might be thinking what is search but what is neural search and why gina and why neural search so neural search is nothing neural search is just a good old search combined with this amazing power of neural networks and you will be curious like okay you told us neural search is combining the good old search with uh, the neural networks but how does it actually works so we'll 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 take an example about really works by taking a simple example and it's uh, i'll i'll tell you a simple example about animals and how the neural search actually works using these simple examples so here on the screen you see some cool images some cute images of dogs and cats and if we have and we can uh, as humans we can uh, differentiate between dogs and images and, and we can put them on different text like these are the images of dogs these are the images of cats how how does a uh, neural search actually does it right it 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 does it in the form of embeddings it has embeddings of cats it has embeddings of dogs and it understands where it lies and then it puts it on different text stream but now let's add a little bit more complexity to it uh, so be a little bit prepared because now we are going to see something that is so let's let's introduce some some more complex pictures to it now it's little bit hard even for us humans to identify which image belongs to a dog and which image belongs to a cat but when we put it in a graph in a two dimensional graph we can actually see Where where all these buckets belong to? So these are the images of cats. Some are the images of cute cats. Some are the images of a little bit ugly looking cat. Similarly for cute dogs and ugly looking dogs. And so th this is where embeddings comes into play. So embeddings is nothing but a vector representation of your data, a vector representation of your uh, images in this case. So here, if you see, we have these embedding groups. Uh, allocated on the different uh, parts of the graph which is how these things are separated and if you see we have on one side cats uh, cute looking cats on above uh, on the above of that we have some ugly looking cats similarly we have differentiation for dogs and ugly dogs and all of this happens in gina all of this happens as at the index time where where when you uh, index the data you index it using embeddings and when you embed this it gets represented it gets clustered into different different categories so whenever you search uh, it search for the closest match and uh, fetches the appropriate results so let's let's uh, let's uh, let's look at the query image let's think uh, think of it as a new image that we send it as a query uh, let's have this cute puppy image that we'll send as a query and see uh, which category it should belong so a simple search problem where we send it as a query and see fetch the relevant results fetch the similar images so where as a it is a little bit complicated to see among all of these four categories where it should fit and that's how neural search engine works it uses the power of neural networks to realize like where it should fit and find the relevant images for this cute little puppy so here it goes and it founds the closest match this proper cluster that we have seen it fits it here you will search for but how did it do that right it, it looks at the cats and images like you, you would say it's just images of cats and dogs but it's not just that it can be applied to a whole different array of things and it can be applied to much complex use case you can have images of uh, clothes you can have different images that can work together and that you can use for for your search that you can use as a cluster and create the embeddings and use it for your search so you can also think of as a neural network model as your brain and how your brain works and in very simple terms neural search uses embeddings from deep learning model to find similar search and embeddings is nothing but a vector representation of your data and uh, your data can be of any type as we have seen it can be images text audio video and can be literally anything and what what all you can search for as we have been talking all about right 
So we have seen use cases about text, images, audio, video, and you'll say, okay, this, this is very normal. But we have even seen the use little 3D magic. Similar proteins using interesting. Uh, what, what are the advantages of fuel search and what are some challenges associated with it? It's semantic. So it's basically similar to how a human works. It understands the context and then it uh, searches for the relevant data. It's not like the keyword based search that we are used to, where you have to give a specific keyword to fetch the relevant results. And it can literally work with all types of data. The challenge that we had with old search uh, systems, or it was mostly limited to text. But uh, neural search can practically work with all kinds of data. And it also comes with a lot of plug and play modules. So in Gina, if you remember, like we, uh, as I have shown the entire ecosystem, you can directly use Gina Hub and plug and play uh, executors from there and can build search for any type of data. So some, it also comes with a lot of challenges, right? Uh, uh, like how do you, do you deploy neural search as it uses a large deep learning model? And how will you optimize for the runtime? And that's where Gina comes in and solves for all of these problems. So let's let's quickly look at Hi, sorry. Uh, is everything all right? I think you froze yeah. for us. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Now is, is everything perfect. Yeah. Can, can you see the screen? Can you also let me, let uh, me know yeah, if you can I see the screen. See screen? Okay. Okay. Uh, where did it actually stop? Like, can you see the presentation now? Uh, I think in the previous slide. Yeah. Yeah, here, uh, about uh, the advantages. Okay, okay, so I'll, I'll quickly repeat these. So yeah, as, as I was telling, the advantages that are associated with neural search is immense. It is semantic, so it actually works like humans. It lets you understand the context behind your data and lets you search accordingly. So it, it lets you understand the context and it doesn't need to be a keyword-based search like the conventional search that we had. And it works with all types of data. It doesn't need to be restricted to just text that we had before. It can work with images, audio, videos, and literally all kinds of data. It also comes with a lot of plug and play modules that you can just use and quickly build your applications. As we have seen, like we have Gina Hub, which is a marketplace for executors that lets you plug and play different executors and quickly build your neural search for any kind of data that you have. And it also has some of the challenges that's associated with it which actually comes at the deployment time, because when you have such a large deep learning model on the back end that processes for your search. So there comes uh, challenges with deployment, there comes challenges with the optimization, runtime and latency. For that, because Gina solves for all of these challenges. So Gina is the answer to all of these challenges and you can use Gina to solve for them and can build your neural search solution that works well in all the real world use cases. Let's quickly look at a in build a fashion so in under five minutes Correct. and talk. Can you see the notebook? Collab notebook. Yeah, yeah, we can we can see. Don't worry. Perfect. So as 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 we talked about Docker, it's it's a library for unstructured data, and it lets you massage your data, pre-process your data, and create embeddings with your data. So we'll use Gina's Docker to build this kind of search solution. Let's quickly move with the notebook. Let's. We have also created this YouTube video where you can just go and look at the different steps on how you can build the search solution and follow along with the notebook, which I'll share the link in the description or in the chat. So the first thing you can do is you can you can run this and you can fetch the data. I've already run this to save the time in the processing and the time it takes to run all of these cells. Here what we do is here we'll uh, 
data from this URL. We have already put the data in a zip format in this uh, uh, GitHub repository, which you can go and check. Then we install the Docker library that is from Jira. We install the Jira's Docker library. And then we import two key components of Docker as I discussed before, which is document and documentary. So you can think of document as something similar to a text uh, and document array as a collection of text. So just like an umpire array, uh, a document array is similar to that. But the cool thing about it is, or the unique thing about Gina's document is, it is not just restricted to text. It can actually go ahead and uh, it, it can actually contain any kind of data. It can be images, audios, videos, or can be anything. And similarly, a document array is a collection of documents. So we import these two things uh, from Docker. Then we'll go ahead and download the images from the path that we have listed, uh, the GitHub repository. We'll go ahead, download this and unzip the data and uh, load. Then we put it, uh, then we put all of this into a document. Like from files, we'll store it in the document array and uh, make it an array of documents. In this case, we'll make it an array of images. So here, if you see, we have downloaded 845 images and converted into 845 documents. So we have a document array consisting of 845 documents. The Docker library also have this cool feature to plot your images in the, in the form of sprites to, to see how our data looks like. And this, this is a very small preview of how our data looks like. Uh, so forgive me for the small size. Then we do some pre-processing and in the pre-processing, what we do is we convert the document, which is the image into a tensor. So we can apply different kind of pre-processing to that or processing to that. We can reshape it. So we'll reshape all the images within the document array into a specific size, which is 8060. We'll apply normalization to normalize the color. And then we'll set the uh, channel axis, which, uh, which is relevant for using a PyTorch model. So we do all this kind of pre-processing and all this kind of pre-processing is uh, done using Docker. Docker allows us to do all of that just out of the box with using some, by using some predefined functions. Then we apply all these pre-processing here. If you see, you'll get 845 images and of uh, the sh same shape. Then you go ahead and install the document library. And uh, depending on your machine, you can choose if you want to run it on a GPU or a CPU. Here I, I have used a GPU for faster training and faster pre-processing. Then once you select this machine, you can go ahead and load the ResNet 50 model. Here we use ResNet 50 model for training for, for, for training uh, the, 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 the search engine. So here we, we have used the ResNet 50 model, pre-trained ResNet 50 model. And then you go ahead and embed your documents. So in the docs, we already have the document, document array that we have created. We go ahead and embed using the ResNet 50 embeddings. And it takes some time to embed. And then you can see the summary of it. So now we have the embeddings ready. Now what we have to do is just get a query document. So we randomly select any query document from the image data that we have. So we go ahead and select this query document. Let's say this white image shirt, uh, image of white shirt is our query. And then we put it in a document array because that's the standard of how we input the data to our model, to our search engine and get the results. So once we put it into documentary, the same kind of pre-processing needs to be applied as we did before with uh, training data. So we do this kind of pre-processing, put it into document array, and then embed it uh, using the ResNet 50 model and go ahead and query for the matches. And here we select uh, uh, limit as nine. You can uh, select it dynamically if you want three similar images or five similar images that is up to you and that can be decided dynamically. So we select nine uh, as the limit. So it goes ahead and fetches the nine relevant images. So for this, it goes and fetches these nine images. And uh, this is fetched in real time from the database of images, uh, of the database of fashion search images that we have trained on out of 845 images. And the really cool thing about Docker is you can then go ahead and also visualize the embeddings in real time. We have created this embedding projector embedding visualizer that can also work in Colab and that can also 
uh, you can also go to this external link and use this visualizer. So if you see here, we have different t-shirt em uh, shirts embedding or fashion images embedding in real time. And this is how we actually build a fashion image search just by using Docker A in less than 10 minutes. Uh, do we have any questions? Hi, for now, it looks like uh, we don't have any questions. Uh, we can wait for a minute or so uh, for someone, so for somebody to write in the chat. Uh, if not, uh, you can maybe say anything more you want to cover or um, possibly if you want to add some, uh, maybe for what else can we use uh, Gina and AI? Right, okay, sure. Okay, so meanwhile we get the questions. I can I can walk you through what else is possible with Gina AI and what else you can do with Gina AI. So as as next steps, you can actually go to Gina's Learning Bootcamp where we have all these different tracks which will get you uh, started from the very beginner to the advanced level of things. And we have covered all, all these things in a structured format. So you can start with very beginner. You don't need to have any knowledge about neural search. Uh, and you can easily get started. So the next steps is to follow Gina's learning bootcamp. And for doc array, you can just go to docarray.gina.ai and follow the relevant documentation. And I, I can actually show you these links. So these, these are the different tracks that we have on the learning bootcamp. It starts with very basic on how the neural search works. Uh, topics on how you can deal with different types of data as we discussed, like text, images, audio, video, even tables. Like Gina also allows you to play with tables and build a search on top of that and 3D meshes. And each of these sections are combined uh, uh, supplemented with the certificate. So once you complete these sections, you will be prompted to a quiz and you complete these qu uh, quiz and you can get certified. So all of these sections are supplemented with the certificate. So I'll recommend you to go ahead and look at all of these sections and complete these. And uh, it's, it's, it's the best way to learn about China and all the other concepts that all the other products that we discussed. And uh, in the end, you can get certified with these. Okay, we have a very well defined documentation with all the different concepts that we have discussed. Oh, and also, you can learn about the different. You can like for text, for images, and the kind of different things you can do with the images, right? So it it lets you. It, the color of the image. It lets you build the image sprites that we. Also, let you segment a big or complicated image into small ones like segmenting or finding the details processing in that. It's possible with Docker. And Docker doesn't have to, to de Docker doesn't have to do anything with Jira. You can use it for any kind of purposes. It doesn't have to be specifically for neural search. Uh, anything or you can use Docker for anything or everything whenever you're dealing with any kind of data pre-processing stuff. So yeah, these these are the next steps you can follow. You can reach out to any of these channels. You can go to get.gina.ai to check our GitHub repository and follow start it for all the updates that uh, uh, that 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 will come in the later future. And if you want to be a part of a community, you can join slack.gina.ai and be a part of our interactive community. You can post all your questions, interact with the Gina team, and uh, have all your queries resolved. If you have any, we can help you build your own project or 
your neural search engine uh, with Gina. And you can follow us on all the socials, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, can stay tuned or uh, subscribe. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, unfortunately, I think our presenter disconnected. So um, we will, uh, since it was already near the end, we will wait for him. For him. We will wait for him for a little bit. Uh, and if you want any more information, you can follow them on their social media. We will send the links in our newsletter. And besides that, uh, we will soon publish this and the previous workshop on our YouTube channel.